Hello, I'm Paola Poletto, Director of Engagement and Learning, and I'm joined today by... I'm Renee Vander Avor, the Assistant Curator of Canadian Art. Thank you for joining us. Today we meet in the virtual world, but I'd like to still acknowledge that the Art Gallery of Ontario operates on land that is the territory of the Anishinaabe, Mississauga Nation, and was also the territory of the Wendat and the Haudenosaunee. The Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant is an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anishinaabe Three Fires Confederacy to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today we're going to talk about William Kurlick and very specifically a reminiscence of youth. Um, Renee, do you remember what you dreamed about last night? <laughs> I do. I think it was an early morning dream, actually. And uh, I was at a friend's birthday party and we were having a, a dance party. So I think it was a very wishful dream. How lovely. What about you? Um, I, the only thing I can remember is a, a lovely plate of um, a, a food of, um, uh, yeah, it was very strange. And, and, I, and I don't know the context or anything about it. So um, dreams are strange. And yet, um, what we have today is a, a really beautiful scene, um, and maybe we can start right into it. Sure. Um, well, this is a painting that I and I know many others love. Um, and I'd love to begin by telling you a little bit about the artist. So this was made by William Karelic who is probably one of the most popular, yet also one of the most enigmatic Canadian painters of the 20th century. He really is celebrated for this type of painting, which is known as a memory painting, um, which is a depiction of his childhood memories on the Canadian prairies. But he's also really well known for his religious scenes and paintings of the apocalypse. So there's these kind of um, dichotomy, this dichotomy in his practice that's very interesting. Um, Karelic was a, a very compelling and complex person. He, uh, he's born in 1927 in Whitford, Alberta, which is near Edmonton. So you can imagine the winters being very real up there. And he is the eldest child of seven in a Ukrainian immigrant farming family. As a child, he and his family moved to Stonewall, Manitoba, which is just north of Winnipeg. And he ends up going to university in Winnipeg and then moves to Toronto to study at the Ontario College of Art, which is now OCADU. Um, but after a year, he moves to Mexico to study and then eventually he moves to England. And it's while he's in Europe that he discovers the work of the great masters like Bosch and Bruegel and uh, these inf influences are very clear uh, in, in all of his work. Um, a pivotal moment for Karelik is 1957 when he converts from Ukrainian Orthodox to the Roman Catholic faith. And during this transitional period, his practice changes immensely. And we really start to see his remarkable ability to tell stories through painting. And these stories often have strong uh, moral and deeply religious undertones. So while he's in England, he also apprentices to become a master framer. And in 1959, he moves back to Toronto and begins working as a framer at the, uh, at the Isaacs Gallery on Young Street and later exhibits his own paintings there. And this is where he really achieves success as a professional artist. So he shows his paintings at Isaac's and people just fall in love with the narrative quality and the very personal quality of his paintings. And again, the most popular are the, the scenes of his childhood on the prairies, um, just like this one. And uh, what's really, what's notable about um, his work is that um, it's the 1960s, he's working in this narrative style, and it's so completely different from what art, other artists are doing at that time. You know, if you think about the 60s, you think about pop art or modernist abstraction, but here you have Karelic who's really staying true to his vision. And um, he had a very intense 25 year career. He created um, an, a very powerful collection of works, and um, they, to this day, they continue to fascinate and inspire the public. So at the AGO, we are 
very fortunate to have many of them on view in the Thompson Collection of Canadian Art, uh, including this work here, Reminiscence, Reminiscences of Youth from 1968. So this, of course, is a memory painting. And what I find very interesting about this work in particular is that Karelic is representing himself in the act of reminiscing. So rather than just a memory scene, it's very self-reflexive. And in a way, it's a double memory because he's painting it when he's about 40. And he's representing himself, uh, first of all, as a teenager lying on the bed, but also he's representing his life as a child uh, on the prairies. Who would he be in that scene, do you think? Oh, in the snowy scene? Yeah. Oh, I think he could be um, any number of them, but I seem to think of him as the child that's walking away <laughs> in the distance to his house. Um, and I, you know, that's just my personal reading of the work. Um, he was a very timid and anxious child. And um, a lot of these scenes um, that are <clears throat> of children playing are, you know, very lighthearted and fun, but there are also vin vignettes that are um, more difficult or that are, you know, kind of violent and they represent the bullying that happens um, kind of on the playground. So these had these dramas uh, as a child had an effect on him. And, um, you know, the, his work is always a little bit bittersweet, I think. Yeah, I, I and, and and I think that's very um, telling that it's a it's a childhood scene, um, maybe teenager and 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 younger childhood. Um, and um, while this is called a memory scene, I, we, we opened with the idea of dreams and, um, and, and it's a curiosity for me because dreams, uh, I mean, I said I had a plate of food and, and there were falafels and I must, have, I must have had them at some point, or I think I must have had that very dish at some point. Um, uh, and, and so there's this wonderful sort of play between a memory and a dream, which offers potential in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this to me reads as a dream because it's so visual. And um, I love that, it, that the central image, which is the dream image, is actually represented as <clears throat> a painting on the wall in his bedroom. So it's also meta in that way. Like he's in his bedroom and the, um, the central image has its own frame around it as well. So it's like this very physical kind of glowing dream image that's super powerful. And then the image that frames it, um, which is him reminiscing, is a lot more subdued. It's more introspective. And um, we can imagine he's listening to that record player that's on the table, kind of in the center uh, right. And um, on, the on the pieces of paper on the table, he's actually written the, the lyrics to um, a Ukrainian folk song, at, because at as a teenager, he was becoming more interested in his Ukrainian roots. And the lyrics to the song are actually, they're quite sad. Um, they represent this longing and um, I can read you a little bit of it. It says, springtime will return anew, that it is, that it brings sadness and pain for youth will never come back, it will never return again. Um, mm -hmm. So again, there's that notion of, um, you know, of, it, of this being a bittersweet work and, and I think, it is super fun, but there is also kind of a somber or menacing quality with the child running home in the distance and that kind of faraway horizon that represents that anxiety that he felt as a child. Wow. Um, and, and, you know, that, that little light bulb up above cannot be the source of light to light up that entire scene. So it, it almost is also like a window outward, outside. Um, just, it, it, you know, the meta as you describe it as it like it is is scenes within scenes and I you know and sort of dimensions within dimensions here. Yeah, absolutely. And if you can, uh, when the AGO opens up again, go have a close look at it. Um, it's almost sort of like a Where's Waldo. I mean, obviously, it's not that dense, but there are all these little stories um, that you can follow, you know, there's sledding, there's a snowball fight, there's a snow fort being built. Um, and again, there's these little moments of kind of um, tension or animosity between some of the children. 
there's also from a from a purely sort of a cre how this is framed and, and created uh, there's a foreground there's a midground there's a background and there's another foreground if you will outside of the winter scene um, it's it's a wonderful way to think about um, where things have been strategically placed as well and they do feel like snippets of activity um, somehow related and not yeah absolutely that's a that's a great observation um, I like to think of the kind of the outer image as a frame uh, in itself because as I mentioned um, Karelic it was a master framer and um, the more you look at his work the more you realize that his frames are um, they some of them are really decorative they're made with unconventional materials um, and he really takes the art of framing to an, to this next level and this work is like the pinnacle of that because in, in essence, the, the scene of him lying on the bed is the frame for the actual painting, which is the dream scene. So it's like this super elaborate frame that is obviously an artwork in itself as well. I think so that's so amazing. unique. Yeah, really yeah. is. Um, and if we go to the next slide, we, we actually have developed a, a line drawing representation of this uh, uh, amazing work. And, uh, and we invite um, our viewers and everyone to sort of consider what, how you would perhaps um, uh, emulate some of the ideas um, uh, that uh, that Karelic had, but perhaps even make them your own. And uh, the activity card or the drawing card is available online um, as a download, um, and uh, there is an additional activity there. But when I look at our line drawings of these master works or these wonderful works, um, they, they also sort of open up other things that perhaps I haven't even seen in the original. Um, uh, like the record player, it just becomes more obvious to me here. Yeah, absolutely. And like the, the kind of the boards and the ceiling and the window and the door off to the side, it, it almost situates the central image even more in, that, in the teenage bedroom. Yeah, it does. Um, so I hope that uh, that uh, you'll you'll share your your um, uh, your designs and your 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 coloring cards with us at AGO Makes hashtag AGO Makes. I also want to maybe go to the next uh, slide and and thank our, our our lead sponsor UCC Upper Canada College for for uh, allowing us and, and or not allowing us, but um, working with us to deliver uh, a, a monthly coloring card um, every uh, and, and available online every month. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. And Thanks, Paula. Good have to a see great you. day. The we same. See. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.